All right, everybody, welcome back to the Jackal's Head here on PSN Radio, SoFlo Radio, Soup Media Network, and of course, the great Talk Stream Live. Man, this show is everywhere like a whore. But now, you are all going to be blessed by a man who is intriguing. He's amazing to listen to, and he's a hell of a rapper. I just found that out a couple days ago from a video called Alien Jam. Welcome to the Jackal's Head, my good friend here, UFO Phil. I'm so happy to have you on, sir. Hello. Hi, Kanye. How are you? No, no. I've been looking forward to talking to you about everything that we're going to do. No, no, Phil, no. I I, I told you, I'm not Kanye. Uh, I'm the Jackal. Okay, when does Kanye... uh, Are you going to put me through to Kanye? Well, Kanye was going to be here tonight, but unfortunately, Kanye uh, had prior engagements, uh, something to do with uh, with a right-wing party he's going to. Apparently, he's really big with mm-hmm. the right-wing movement now. I don't know what's going on with him. That's because, I, th- uh, I it's my understanding that he likes to hang out with George Bush. They're, I, they're very good friends. Apparently, after the comments that were made, they became uh, buddies. They're, they're golf buddies now, Kanye and George Bush. That's but, great. But that's unfortunately... That's really promising. You know, we're making bridges, every single one of us. We're making bridges. Phil, what is the latest that you're working on? You know, give us a little insight on the on the world of UFO Phil, because as I talk to my audience here for the last couple of weeks, you're a very intriguing man. You have, of course, this amazing compound with a bunker in it. It has two distinctive layers, the inside and, of course, the very important outside of the bunker. And you, of course, are doing a lot of work in ufology. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on with you and what's the latest in the world of UFO, Phil? Well, can you keep a secret? I, I could try. For you, yes. Well, that's all we can really do. Yeah, well, as long as you're trying. You know, I'm not going to fault you as long as you're trying. I- I'm going to try for you. Uh, for you, I will. Uh, okay, I'll try for you, too. Good man. <laughs> then um, I will tell you what's going on because, really, there's so much. I hope you have a little while because it's, I don't know if you heard. We were doing this thing last year in Colorado. We were um, getting laying the groundwork for building a pyramid on top of Pikes Peak there in the Rocky Mountains. That's still about going that, yes. forward. We're... Yeah, we're, uh, we're we're working through the red tape on that, you know, because we have to deal with the, the National Forest Service. So it takes a long, long time to get everything stamped off and approved, but it's looking really good getting the pyramid built. And then we have a second pyramid that we would like to build in San Francisco in the Bay. On There's a little island out there. I don't know if you've heard about this. Um, it's called Alcatraz. Some, some yes. people are aware of this island, and we're going to be putting the pyramid there. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so those are very exciting projects, and uh, we're hoping to get those built in time to, uh, and we're going to uh, have a big launch party on uh, June 10th, 2012, to celebrate the progress with the pyramids, but also the arrival of the aliens, and we're going to uh, have the party, and that's why I thought you were Kanye, because I need to speak with him, because he's going to be performing at the party along with Katy Perry. They have a song uh, called Extraterrestrial that they do together. And then uh, Lady Gaga will be there, and she is an alien. So this is that. all part of the. Uh, yes, it's true. She hatched from an egg once, and I think everyone who anyone who doubted whether she was an alien, once they saw her come from the egg, they said, "Oh, okay, yes, now we see. Now we know it's true." So she does kind of look uh, reptilian, reptilian-ish, doesn't she? She gets that a lot. Yeah, yes. she gets that a lot. I understand. So Phil, let, let me communicating. Let me get this straight. We're talking about multiple pyramids built for the arrival of these aliens. Now, are these the aliens the Mayans were warning us about? Uh, I mean, does this have to do with the Mayans at all in, in the end of the 2012 calendar? Yeah, actually, it, it's it's completely true. I, I'm, I'm glad that you are um, obviously very well educated on the matter because some people think that the Mayan calendar, when it ends, that that means it's the end of the world, and that's not the case at all, right. not even close. <laughs> I don't think that's so either. Absurd. That's absurd, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, but what is really happening, of course, is much more practical, and that is that the, uh, the, the alien, it signifies the coming of the aliens, and they're going to arrive in 2012, on June 10th, and then they will be bringing us all sorts of great new technologies, medicines to cure diseases, and of course a new calendar, because the old one's done, so we're going to need a new one. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, are these aliens, uh, I mean, have you seen these aliens yourself, Phil? And can you keep a secret? Yes, I can. 
Yeah, I've seen. Uh, well, I've seen, actually in close uh, more, more than seen them. I've I've hung out with them, spent time with them. Zaxxon, he's the leader of the Good Aliens. Zaxxon. He, right. I got a picture. Yeah, I got a picture of him right here. This is Zaxxon. Yes, he has very nice skin, and he is really my best friend. And that will give you an indication of how much time I've spent with him. He will um, sometimes take me, you know, we'll just go off into the stars together. He's taking me to his planet, and he shared with me lots of different plans that he has for the human race. Can you share with us some of these plans that they have for the human race? No. Not one? Maybe one. Can you give us one? We won't tell. It'll be yeah, a secret. Yeah, um... Well, I mean, I, like I mentioned, you know, they want to bring us some technology and some medicine. Um, a lot of it has to do, too, with they see that the way we live our lives, and they know that the planet will become destroyed if we continue, you know, doing the things that we're doing. So they want to bring us the knowledge that we need so that we can just... And this is another reason why I'm working with Kanye. As you can see, like you said yourself, he's, mm. he used to not like George Bush. And you remember the things that he said, well, George Bush doesn't care about, you know, a certain kind of people and this right. and that, and then there's right. racism and all that. And so these kinds of things are very destructive to us, and that's why it causes wars and everything. And, then, and of course, the good aliens, they want to end all this and just come down here and show us that it doesn't matter what color you are. Because the good aliens, they're blue, see? And they know, and then the bad aliens are red. And it would be easy, you know, to, to look at the colors and to say, well, let's fight about the color of our skin. But they don't right. do that, because the good aliens, the bad aliens, they fight about other things. So they're really beyond the whole color thing. Do you think the movie Avatar was a little yeah. bit of a sign of what's really uh, coming? Well, they got the part about the blue skin right. Elizabeth Taylor, movie legend. We lost her too soon. Gone, but not forgotten. Now, you can own an authentic piece of movie history. Elizabeth Taylor's Ashes. In a small commemorative urn. Remember, remember. I want you to forget me, please. For just $29.95 plus shipping and handling, we'll send you an ounce of real superstar soot. Elizabeth Taylor, movie legend. You can have a piece of her forever. Command performances leave me quite cold. Call today. Hurry. Quantities are limited. All right, everybody. We are back after a short interruption by the New World Order who does not want the truth and the information told to the people that we're telling here tonight. UFO Phil is back on the line with me. UFO Phil, they cannot stop you, my friend. No matter how hard I know. You know, it's the, it's the bad aliens. Are you there? Are you there? We're all here. I think Kanye's even listening. I think we got his attention. I know, I know. He he should be, because he's concerned, too, if he wants peace on the planet. And he's shown us that. He really has with, you know, making friends with George W. Bush. I think that's great. That um, is but great. But the bad aliens, they're trying to shut us down. They're, they, the bad aliens are listening. They can listen anywhere. It doesn't matter where they are. They don't even need Skype. They can just listen in their little bad alien brains. And then they hear what we're saying, and they don't like it, and they shut us down. What is Kanye's role going to be? Is he like an ambassador for mankind? or What's his role exactly in this whole thing? I think that initially, you know, when, when, when I contacted Kanye and, and I told him about the concert for the aliens coming up next year, right. he, uh, it, he's very interested in performing, you know, Kanye is. Um, he hasn't actually committed to the date because he's so very busy. But I think that I really got the ball rolling when I started talking to him about the good aliens and, and what they want to do. And, and now he's going out there and he's taking it upon himself to become this ambassador for the world. And I do believe that if he chooses to go ahead and perform for the arrival of the aliens, that he will be able to be a sort of ambassador for the whole universe. Is he sort of like a prophet, you think? I, th I don't know. I, I'm waiting. It, that's why I want to talk to him. And that's actually one of the questions I have written down right here. I don't know if you've seen my notes. But when I, I talk to him, one of the things I want to ask him, I'm going to show him a picture of Zaxxon. Okay. And then on what the is, other side, I have my notes, and it says, are you a prophet? What does Zaxxon look like? I mean, what can you describe Zaxxon to us? Can you give a secret? Yes, I can. Did you, can you not see the picture, though, that I was holding? I didn't no, know no, you no, see it. Uh, no, Phil, this is radio. This, this is radio only. Okay. So, if you could see it, what you would see here is that he has very nice skin, and he's very blue. Okay. And this is a, 
this right here is a picture. A lot of people say, well, we want to see proof. We don't believe in aliens. We want to, you talk about Zaxxon, show us proof. And this right here is a picture of Zaxxon that shows this was when he came to my house. It's proof. Now, you've been aboard the craft with Zaxxon and the other aliens, the good aliens? Yes, I have. The good aliens, you know, and the bad aliens, they all will abduct, abduct me at different times. Now, what's your relationship, the relationship like with the bad aliens, though? Relationship? Yes. Hmm. Well, it's really, but you know, the, the bad aliens, when they abduct me, they're not very nice. That's, you know, well, you probably could guess that by the name, bad aliens. Right, correct. They won't call in advance or anything. They won't tell you they're coming. You'll just be asleep. You'll be comfortable and cozy in your bed, and suddenly you'll just be ripped out of your bed, beamed aboard their, aboard their spacecraft, and then they'll, they'll just cut you open and do experiments on you. And they don't, a lot of times they won't even, they won't talk to you. They don't even, well, they're not even interested in a conversation. They just want to, I don't know what they're doing. They're looking, they're cutting you, they're putting uh, chips in your brain to make you try and do bad things. When, so then when they put you back on Earth, then they can control you like a remote control thing. Huh. Do you think they're... That's what I said. That's, a, that's amazing. So you think they're, they're actually able to control people in, in that way? Like if we were remotely controlled? Absolutely. I, I've seen evidence. And you, all you have to do is you watch the news and you see these bad people doing these really horrible things. And a lot of times they have that look in their eye, that vacant, crazy person look. And they're being controlled by the bad aliens. Now, Phil, we read a story here earlier tonight about the JFK assassination possibly being connected to the alien conspiracy and, you know, that he was interested in finding out the truth about aliens. And 10 days after he requested several documents, he was assassinated. Do you think that there's any truth to this new report that he, the fact that he asked for these documents is what got him killed? Do you, do you think that could be a possibility? Well, JFK was a very smart man, and he was actually in contact with the aliens himself. They were visiting him at the White House. In fact, they were talking to him. They were in negotiations to, to do a whole lot of things on this planet. And they knew, you know, JFK, he was a forerunner in, in space travel, the whole moon landing and everything. You know, if JFK hadn't been in, in communication with the alien beings, then he probably wouldn't have pushed so hard for NASA to make the achievements that they did. And he was in negotiations with Zaxxon at the time to make some really radical changes. There were going to be some really big changes. And so really, and by the way, one of those changes was they were going to change it to the Blue House. The White House would have become the Blue House. And it was things like this that Sense. upset certain people. Yeah, of course. And, well, and why do you think that he was so angry with the Red Communist Cubans, because red is the color of the bad aliens. Yeah. I'm, I'm Cuban, and by the way, and you're, this, you're absolutely right. I am, you know, I am Cuban, and you're absolutely right, by the way. Right, but are you a red communist Cuban? Negative, no. Right, you, because you live here, and I just assumed that you weren't trying to take over the country. Now, if you are, we're probably going to have to get Zaxxon on the line and talk about it. No, 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 I'm not trying to think. I'm just trying to entertain people on radio and bring them information that really enlightens them and i think this is information that's enlightening to a lot of our listeners i think that this is the information that they need to be paying attention to and you know you have fulfilled you do have a movie that you've released it's all over the internet it's a very popular movie can you tell us a little bit about this film and what drove you to create this amazing movie uh well you have fulfilled the movie was um by the way you know that jfk didn't hate all cubans right no, yes, I know. He, he had a fondness for yeah. the, the, the maid who was Cuban, I think, at the White House. Yeah, so you have fulfilled the, Have you ever seen I Love Lucy? Of course. Yeah, because I think Ricky Ricardo on that show, well, he was Cuban, too. Yeah, he was. People like oh, him. Lucy, I am home. <laughs> that was really good. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. practiced that over the years. That was, I really enjoy um, people who do impersonations of Pee Wee Herman doing impersonations of Ricky Ricardo. I could probably That's pull great. that off. I could pull that off, I think. You so, know, speaking you of Pee Wee Herman, you know, you know why Pee Wee Herman got arrested all those years ago, right? In the theater? 
it wasn't really because he was doing something naughty to himself. It's just he was disturbing the other people there with, you know, with the way he was doing it with it. <laughs> just, you know, it was too much. Mm. Well, that's because, you know, he was under the influence of the bad aliens. They had put a, implanted a chip in him, and they were pushing that button that controlled him and makes him do things. Man, you know, the they aliens, have, it's they very have control over everybody, these aliens. Well, if they plant a chip in your head, there's not much you can do about it beyond that. Now, you need to try and be vigilant and keep them from putting the chip in there. But once the chip gets in there, you're done. You're done. I, I hope I don't have the chip in there. But look, let's get back to the movie UFO Phil. Uh, tell us a little bit about this film of yours. UFO Phil, the movie that was actually filmed, it was a documentary that we filmed um, uh, when I lived on Mount Spokane. I've moved around quite a, a lot of different places to do my work. Right. And when I lived on Mount Spokane, I had my compound there. And we, actually this filmmaker named Les Michaels came up from Los Angeles. And he wanted to do a documentary. And he, I allowed him to place cameras all around everywhere. And they just filmed, filmed, filmed all the time for several months and then put it all together. And then that's the movie. So it's completely 100% just my life and the things that happened, and there's some music in there. You can see me performing a concert. On, uh, I did one on the streets of Spokane, and then I did some. Uh, I did a rap song, which I think is why Kanye became interested, because I do. I modeled my rap song, my stylings, a lot after Kanye's music, and I think he respects that. You know what? From listening to the Alien Jam song that we played here earlier tonight, you know what? I could definitely see the influence in Kanye West within your, your rapping. I didn't know you were you were the, the lyricist though. You you were dropping some very nice rhymes, my friend. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's all truth, you know. And I was just keeping it real, and then, you know, just doing that concert, and then uh, that really helped to get the message out to to all the different peoples of the planet. Now, being UFO Phil, when you go and talk to people, I'm sure that you're open to talk to just about anybody. Have you gone to, like, the hood and talked to the homies about UFOs and, and about what you're doing and what you're working on? I'm really down with that. Pretty much anything, um, anywhere that I could go, um, if nobody's going to pop a cap, then I'll be okay. Um, I'm a little concerned because of there seems to be, um, okay, I went to Los Angeles I go down there because I'm in California now, and I went down to Los Angeles, and I ended up in this, um, there's a town called East Los Angeles, or it's part of the town, and there were some people who seemed a little upset, they were a little confused about the whole red and blue thing, red oh. aliens good, you know, red aliens bad, blue aliens good, and there were right. some people that wanted to argue with me about it, and I felt very unsafe. You know, and perhaps next time when I go there, I'll have to go with Zax on, so I feel a little bit more protected. Phil, uh, are you familiar with the, the gang's Bloods and Crips? Um, what kind of aliens are those? Well, Bloods and Crips are not actually aliens. They're gangbangers from the West Coast. And uh, it, you know what? There's been reports in the past of possibility that some of them might be reptilians. So the color scheme yeah. plays perfect because they each, one wears red and one wears blue. Oh. They're representing for the That aliens, explains it. So which one of them wears blue? The Crips. The Crips wear blue. Right, and the Bloods and are so, the other okay. red. Okay, Bloods are the red, that makes sense. So maybe the, when I was there and these particular gentlemen were getting somewhat hostile toward me, maybe they were bloods because I was wearing blue. That might be a possibility. That might be a possibility. Maybe they just mistook you to, you know, as being a, a, a homie from another set that they don't really get along with. So that's a possibility. Yeah, but see, this is the, the kind of thing that Kanye and I are going to work together on to try, and, to try and fix. So you're going to try to bring unity between the bloods and the crips as well as the good and the bad aliens? Are you trying to bring them together and try to see if we can work out the differences between the good and the bad aliens? It goes even deeper than that, if you can believe that. Um, deeper than that? Oh, man, tell yeah. us. We're even going to get try and get Republicans and Democrats to work together. Oh, that'll never work, Phil. No. Well, we'll try with the blood and the crypts first. You know, tackle something a little easy, and then we'll try and do the, the other stuff. 
I think Bloods and the Crips will be easier than the Republicans and Democrats. But it's amazing how the, the red and the blue again comes into play with the Democrats and the Republicans. And again, I'm starting to to think that you're right on the money here, here Phil. And uh, I I really do believe there's a lot of uh, reptilians within power in our government. The aliens are everywhere, and the trick is figuring out which ones are good aliens and which ones are bad aliens. And it's not that we want to destroy the bad aliens. We just want to bring them around to a less violent way of living. You know, we want them to be – we want everyone to be good. Right. And I think eventually – that even even eventually the, the red aliens, they can keep their red skin because we don't want to change someone's skin. They can keep their red skin, but they need to change their ways. And, you know, they need to take some advice from Santana. Now, that's that's a good point. Yes, Santana is a great musician, and they should take some advice from him. But check this out: How does some of uh, you know the common folks who might not have the ability to you know know exactly right off the bat what a good alien and a bad alien is like? Uh, how can we tell just right off the bat by looking at them? You know, not only color scheme, but I'm sure there's some good red aliens. I'm sure not all of them are bad, right? You need to be careful when you start thinking like that because you're going to get tricked and trapped. Hmm. And then they'll do the prodding, and then you'll. The next thing you know, the chip is there, and then you're going to be walking around like a robot because they're going to be pushing the button. And sometimes they'll do it just for fun. They so, will just put the chip in your head, and then you will be just walking around, bumping into walls, and they are hiding somewhere in the clouds, looking down and laughing at you. So, in other words, you think there's no chance whatsoever of meeting a good red alien at all? Doesn't exist. Not at this time. They're, it's not. Now, this is what we're trying to do next year. You know, in 2012 is when the good aliens come, and then we are going to work together with them, and then we are going to work toward universal peace. And eventually, yes, it's possible. But right now, if you allow yourself to drop your defenses and say, well, this, I know this person has, you know, they look like a bad alien. They're carrying around a scalpel. They have a single eye in the middle of their forehead, and their skin is red. But maybe I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. You really need to be careful thinking like that. You, Phil, why are they so obsessed with anal probes? That's something that I, I keep hearing a lot about, anal probes and then, you know, doing some really nasty sexual experiments on people. Breaking up. Right. Same. Can't, can't really talk about this one, huh? They don't let you. I don't have a no problem with the phone line. So UFO Phil, the movie, was uh, on Spokane, and then there's the songs in there, and then if you listen carefully, there's some subliminal messages, too, that will help you be at more, more at peace with yourself. Huh. Okay, so definitely that, that question is off limits. Uh, that this make sure we mark that down as don't ask that question again. Phil, uh, to my audience here, They've heard you, of course, over the years on Coast to Coast and, and a lot of other programs and stuff. Uh, you know, how did you get started uh, doing what you're doing now? I mean, how did this become your life's work? Can you keep a secret? Yes, sir. Well, really, you know, when Zaxxon first contacted me in 1972, mm -hmm. and he, the good aliens will implant chips in you as well, by the way, and he implanted a musical chip in my brain that made me understand all different types of music and made me very very good at making these songs and then i had to go about the arduous task of actually learning to play instruments after that but he wanted me to go out and spread the message through music and it's hard to say no to zaxon he's very powerful and he has very good skin and so it really became my life's work because of that because as a child he would come to me and talk to me, and he taught me so many things and then sent me out into the world to do this stuff. So um, really, when, you know, Coast to Coast was on the radio, and I would listen, and I realized that these, this was a group of people on the show and then the listeners that were ready to listen to Zaxxon's message. That's why I picked up the phone and called. And then, you know, um, George Norrie has been very kind in that he usually takes my calls, and he'll put me on the air, and then he's played my song, and he's helping me to get the message out. And then we're having lunch next Tuesday. God bless George Norrie. He's a good man. Yeah, he's great. He is great. He has a really nice mustache. Yeah, he does. He has a lovely mustache. He's a lovely man with a 
crepe mustache, and a hero to a lot of us here on radio. And uh, you know that's an amazing hookup to have uh, for yourself. And you know now that you're doing music, you've done the rap song, you've done a couple other different type type of music. Are you looking to put out a record as well, Phil? Well, I do have my album on iTunes, which I hadn't really set out to make an album, but over the years, as I just made songs, I started to realize that I had a whole lot of them put together, so I decided to just put them all together in one album, and it's called Gravity Brings Me Down, and that, that's also the, a song that's on there, Gravity, and uh, it's on iTunes, and you can get to that through my website, too. Here, give the audience your website address. What, what is the address to the website? It's just ufophil.com, U-F-O-P-H-I-L.com. Now, Phil, you were also involved in a very interesting, uh, I guess it would be a documentary, the George Lucas, uh, the People vs. George Lucas uh, film. Tell us a little bit about this. How did you get involved with this project? I ain't got no beef with George Lucas. <laughs> well, so let me just say that. Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, I love George Lucas, and, you know, what happened was the filmmakers that are based in Denver, they were working on this documentary, and they they called me up and said, Phil, we are making a documentary that shows both sides of the story about people who love Lucas and hate him, or people who love him but hate the prequels, or whatever, and they were just showing all these different opinions, and... But the title of the film, and then they, so they asked me if they could use my song, because I had a song about George Lucas called Dear George Lucas. And so they wanted to use that, and then we made a video for it, and that, so that's in the movie. But after the film was released, and um, it's currently doing um, you know, film festivals around the world, but a lot of people sent me emails and said, you know, hey, well, why do you got to be hating on George Lucas? And I said, well, I'm not. And then they say, well, the, it says the people versus George Lucas, and it makes it sound like he's a bad guy. And so right. that was never my intention. And it's my understanding that the filmmakers, you know, they were just trying to say, you know, there are some people who feel negatively about the prequels. And, well, everybody hates Jar Jar Binks, so that's true. Yes. But but pretty much there are some people who still will respect, will respect the prequels or you still like, you know, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, but maybe you didn't like episode one. So it's, there's a lot more to it than just people hating George Lucas. And that's not really what, I don't think that's what the title means. And have you ever uh, ran into George Lucas yourself and, and talked to the man? Other than the time we sat down and had sushi in San Francisco, no. But did you ask him when you had sushi in San Francisco why in the world he came up with a character like Jar Jar Binks? I tried to avoid the subject. I actually started to ask him about it, and he there was a rage that came over his face. And nobody wants to see, trust me, when you're sitting next to George Lucas, you do not want to see this look that comes over his face. So I started to try and appease him. And I started to just try and talk about, you know, all the good things and wonderful things about the movies. And I just tried to erase the Jar Jar Binks thing altogether because I could see him getting angry because he knew where I was going with it. <sighs> and if, you know, George Lucas gets angry and he starts yelling, I mean, if the whole thing is, it's in THX and it's very loud. Yeah, I can imagine. He, he, so he's very sensitive about the Jar Jar Binks uh, character. As, is, as expected, he's taken a lot of flack over the years uh, for this character that wasn't very well re received. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on uh, a possibility of George Lucas being an alien? He does have kind of a weird fourth chin growing down there, uh, you know, under the beard. Why you got to be hating on George Lucas? I'm not hating. I'm not hating. He just ha he has this huge thing under right under where normally people have a, their throat. I don't know, there's this growth. That looks, it looks like Watto from Star Wars. It, it makes you, yeah, it makes you wish for him that he had a team of CGI people to just follow him around and just keep everything looking good. And, you know, you could have this virtual George Lucas in his place that would always look like the George Lucas from 1977. That would be great. That'd be great, yeah. And then, you know, yeah, and then over the years, you could put him on, on the back of, like, a giant lizard monster just for fun, and he would be, you know, crossing the Golden Gate on the lizard monster, or, you know, all of a sudden, Greedo would show up, and then you would be wondering who shot first, is it George Lucas or is it Greedo? And then the CGI people would go crazy, and then there'd be the George Lucas special edition, and so maybe we'd better not do it. It would get a little too insane. Do you think George Lucas stays up at night thinking, man... People hate me for what I've done in the prequels. Or do you think he doesn't really give a crap? 
I think that he probably is just doing what he believes is the right thing to do. And so he's not, it's not that he doesn't care, it's just that he believes that Star Wars is his creation and that he has the right to do whatever he wants. And I think there's also enough people that will love everything he does that he's just catering to them. That's interesting. He does tackle the UFO alien other world subject to quite a lot in his films. Of course, Star Wars is about a galaxy far, far away. Uh, do you think that he might have some inside knowledge, though, uh, about what's going on? He's a believer. He believes in the aliens, and we discussed this over sushi. And he does believe. And, and um, when I showed him the picture of Zaxxon, he just nodded his head. And he didn't say much, but he just nodded his head. And I know, I know that he knows that it's real and that it's true and that, and he's ready for 2012. And I'm really hoping that, because he just lives right up the road, up in the Bay Area, and uh, that he'll come down. Because uh, I'm right now preparing for this concert next year in a place called Monterey, California, which is just, you know, it's about an hour and a half from San Francisco. So I'm sure George, George Lucas will come down and, and par participate in the concert. Oh, I'm sure he has a VIP pass. I mean, it's George Lucas. Yeah, he doesn't even need a pass. He can just come in. People will recognize yeah, yeah. him based on the exactly. description that you gave. Yeah, yeah, this is true. Yeah, and, and uh, his money could buy in, into any, any special or any event. Uh, Phil, well, we're hoping for a sizable donation from him as well to get the concert going. Phil, in this concert, uh, who else is going to be performing there? Is it it's going to be yourself, and who else is going to be at this at this thing? Yeah, I'm good. I'll I'll do a couple songs probably. Um, and then, of course, Lady Gaga will hatch from an egg. And then uh, Kanye and Katy Perry will each do. They're they're gonna. Kanye will perform first, and then Katy Perry, and then in the middle there, they're gonna do a song together. So and then I'm hoping to have them, some alien. Okay. Yeah, and I'm hoping to have some alien acts as well. I sent, um, you know, uh, I've sent an invite to the aliens that are will be arriving on the planet. And told them to just, you know, bring their gear, bring their equipment, and be, you know, ready to perform. I think it'll be great. Now, why pyramids, though? Why are these structures pyramids that you're, that you're building? Can you keep a secret? Yes, I can. Well, the pyramids really worked well for the ancient Egyptians. You know, they were in contact with aliens. And a lot of people don't realize they were used as power plants. They're not just giant pretty stone monuments. They actually had a functional purpose, and they're able to generate hydrogen power, and a lot of the alien spacecraft runs on hydrogen power, and then, of course, so what's going to happen is we build these pyramids. It provides a perfect landing pad for the aliens. If you, I don't know if you've ever seen a real alien ship, but they have this little hole in the bottom that will just sit right on top of the pyramid, and then they, will, they land there, and they can refuel from the hydrogen gas and then we can also use hydrogen as a as a fuel for Earth as well. Are these aliens the Anunnaki at all, Phil? Is that a type of sushi? No. The Anunnaki, of course, are suspected to be from the planet Nibiru. Are these beings from Nibiru? Well, I'm just in contact with the aliens from planet Zaxxon, and then there's Rognus, Rognus 2, and Rognus 4. And there's, bad there's, aliens. No alien, there's no aliens from Nibiru that you're aware of at all? Not that, I mean, they are, there could be. There's lots of different planets. But these are not okay. the ones that contact me. Okay, okay. So these are not, the, we're not talking about the same aliens that contacted the Sumerians many, many, many centuries ago and uh, supposedly seeded life on this planet. So these are not those aliens. Uh, so these aliens, uh, do, you think, do you think there's a greater agenda for this planet from these aliens that are coming down here? If it's not the Anunnaki? The good aliens? Yes, the good aliens. What's, what is the greater agenda? You know, at the end of the day, after 2012 happens, what is the greater agenda? Just to unite the entire planet, is that really it? To just unite all of us? Yeah, well, I mean, if there is one... See, we are only aware of a very small percentage of the universe. I mean, our own planet, to some degree, what, you know, the stuff that's going on in our solar system, and then everything else is just so far away... That we're really out of the loop. It's like in the old days before the Internet, when the only way you'd find out about anything that happened anywhere else was if, you know, somebody came to town on a horse and they, they gave you, you know, a newspaper from some other town far away. And then you could say, oh, look, 
so and so, you know, had a baby, you know, in that town, and now we know, but that happened like 12 years ago, and the horse guy just got here with his newspaper. So in some ways, we're really primitive like that as far as what's going on in other planets. It takes a long time. By the time we even see anything like a planet explode, you know, it takes so long for that light to even reach us. So the explosion happened so long ago, and we're just finding out about it. So really, there's this kind of interstellar internet that Zaxxon would like to lay the foundation for and get everyone connected on all the different planets in all the different galaxies and just get everyone on the same page so that we can just get this free flow of information going and then everyone can just kind of be, you know, help each other and then, you know, there's probably going to be a very sizable subscription fee um, and then I think in the, the very beginning they're looking at a pay per minute plan but hopefully over time that, you know, you can just get like a monthly plan and then eventually streaming video from other planets. That'd be amazing. Maybe we could have aliens on Ustream from other worlds uh, doing talk shows on Ustream. Yeah, I mean, you'd be able to listen in, and, you know, you might not understand them at first, but there will be, you know, like Rosetta Stone, you can learn different languages, and I'm sure we'll have one for, you know, the different alien tongues. Now, these aliens, they do have a, a vocabulary, they have a language, they don't just talk telepathically, right? They, yeah, they're able, well, yeah, they can talk, you know, like we can, with different, they have languages, they can speak English, they're very quick to learn languages, like if they come to this planet, they, within just a few moments, they absorb the language of whoever is talking to them, and they are able to understand it, they, it's like a code cracking program in, in their minds that runs through all the possible scenarios of what these different words can mean, and it just cracks the code, and then they suddenly are able to speak that language forever. So whenever they go to a new planet, they are just, like, they're in the dark for a very short amount of time, like a minute and a half. How long do you and think then, they've been they also, on this planet, though? I mean, they, if they know all our languages at this point, how long have they been here? Oh, they've been here for thousands of years. So, in other words, they, a long they, time. They, have they, they've molded our society in many ways, haven't they? Yeah, well, I mean, if you consider that the original limestone pyramids in Egypt were built in, you know, right around 2560 B.C., that's a long time ago. And they were here to help with that, and probably a lot before that, too, they were here. That is true. That's amazing. Uh, it's amazing how our own society might have been created, developed, manufactured by these beings. Everything we think of, everything we have... Might have been just handed to us by them. They're the architects, are they not? Yeah. The, in many ways, they are. Even the things that we think were built by man were influenced by aliens. You know, because you've got the pyramids of Giza, you've got the the different you know structures, the Mayan structures. Um, you've got just so many different, and you've got McDonald's. You know, and these these yes. structures and these these things that Starbucks. were built. And they're amazing the way that they're able to get a drink to you so quickly, you know. And you do pay for it. I mean, it is, it's not cheap for, you know, a latte these days. And they just, they just raise their prices. But you know still, at the end of the day, that, that steamed milk would not have happened if it had not been for alien technology somewhere along the line. Do so you think most of our advancements in the last 50 years since, the, you know, really since the Roswell crash in 47 has been because of the aliens? And were the, was the Roswell crash one of the good or the bad aliens that you know of? Yeah, oh, well, he died, so it was neither good nor bad, the guy that crashed there um, at that point. But um, they were, at that time, um, it, it was described as, I think, like a silver-shaped disc. Right. And I don't really have much data on who those particular aliens were. Now, I did end up with some of the scrap metal from the crash site. It was very interesting, but it's just, yeah, I, I tried to find traces of blue or red on the ship because the, the, the blue, the good aliens, because they have blue ships, but there was no, none, there was no paint or anything that, so I don't know if in the crash, if all the, the paint just burned off or what, but so it was just a silver craft. And I don't know if they're good or bad, you know, and he's not talking. But you do think that, you do believe that the Roswell crash was a real, authentic alien spacecraft? Absolutely. You know, I, I lived in Roswell as a child and uh, had some of the debris because my father 
And my father was actually born the, right before the crash. It's kind of interesting, like the, the day of the crash, my father was oh, my. born. Yeah, and that so he weird. was it very, yeah, there there's different stories handed down through the family about what that was all about and how he may have been in touch with the aliens even before he was born. And, um, you know, there's different stories. And people will talk in small towns, you know, about, you know, my grandmother, she was not married at the time. And then so when she, you know, all of a sudden she was pregnant with a baby, then people will talk. And so right. could it have been the aliens? It could have been the aliens. I don't know. Do I have alien blood in me? I There's no evidence. I don't know. But Zaxxon, he does seem to treat me very, very well. So that's all I'm saying. Do you speak their language also, or does Zaxxon speak to you in English? He talks to me in English and then in my mind. In your mind, okay. So, so you don't speak their language yourself. You haven't. Been, you don't have that ability to be able to speak languages easily. Because that would be it's, a dead giveaway well, if you were part alien. Well, I know, but I for some reason I just can't pick up the language very well. It's very difficult. Well, maybe maybe uh, you didn't get that gene. Uh, is how you know your father was he involved in trying to bring this to the forefront as well before you got involved in this whole thing. There's so many stories, and he, you know, he left this world, unfortunately, um, when I was quite young. And so I don't have a whole lot of recollection of interaction with him. And there are people who try and tell me, Phil, your father's still alive. And the man that has come forth and claimed to be my father, that's not my father. I can tell. It's not him. And so I don't know what's going on. I think the government might be working with the bad aliens, and they're trying to harvest information from me and they're trying to trick me it's sort of like you get those emails and they call them phishing emails and they try and get they gain your trust because you think when if somebody is you know the former deposed king of some african nation you think you can trust this person and that's what it's like it's, you, this person claims to be my father so then you think you can trust them and then you find that you can't they you know and when my father the man claiming to be my father and he showed up and, and, and I'll admit there was a resemblance to the photos I've seen of my father, and he did look very, very convincing, and we sat down and we talked. At the point when he had me pull up my bank account and was asking me to wire all of my money to this foreign address, then I knew there was a problem. Mm-hmm. So if somebody does that, they, they may not be your father. That's a dead giveaway. Usually. That's a dead giveaway, Phil. And tell me you didn't wire any money to this man. You can't get me to do something like that a second time. Phil, you didn't. Tell me you didn't. I will never do that again. Oh, Phil, 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 Phil. And has he disappeared after he got this money from you? He keeps coming around. This guy, he's on Facebook. He keeps on posting Facebook. on my wall. What what kind of comments does it leave on your wall? Profanity. And he's claiming to be your father, and he's leaving profanity on your Facebook wall. Shame on him. Yeah, I know. That's why he just couldn't possibly be. If, if he is my father, he is not a good role model. No, definitely not. What does your mother think of, of this whole thing? I mean, she's still around, right? No, I have not seen her either at all. She never even came back around and asked for money. Well, at least she didn't ask for money. That's a positive. That's true. I mean, you got to look at the the bright side of things. Uh, so your mom's not around. Your your father obviously is not around, and this man is pretending to be your father for money. Uh, do you have any family at all, Phil, or are you alone right now? Pretty much just you right now. So it's just the two of us right now on radio. That's all. That's all we have. Yeah. Yeah. That's my, why I'm my. so glad that you called. I'm glad that we're talking. And if you, I hope you're never going to hang up. No, no, I'd, I'd hate to hang up. Are you kidding me? Even though we are running towards a break here in about a minute, uh, I, I would hate to leave you, Phil. Uh, we, you know, we have to talk many times here on the show because your story is amazing. It really is. Uh, and it, everything you're doing is for a, a good cause. You're trying to unite the world, and you need people like you doing the, doing this kind of service. And again, if the aliens are good, I think we can all accept them. Do you think the society's ready to accept these aliens, Phil? 
I sure hope so because I'm I need to get this pyramid on on Alcatraz put together. And I know that there are going to be people, because I encountered this in Colorado, there are going to be people who come out against me, and there's going to be people who try and stop it. They're being influenced by the bad aliens. And I tell you what, because I know that Alcatraz itself is not wide enough to support a pyramid, and so we're going to have to put pylons out in the sea, and people are not going to, they're going to be upset by that. Because the pyramid has to be 755 755 feet wide and Alcatraz is only 550 so we have to do what we have to do to make this work and put some supports out there in the ocean and I know the environmentalists are going to get upset and so I need you and other people who can support this to to make sure that you just send me good vibes and good energy and hopefully some money and then we can get this done you know what I think everybody who's listening in tonight should definitely join in and help out and try to get this finished we do have to take a commercial break but when we come back from break I want everybody to call in if you have anything you want to say to UFO Phil if you have any questions if you want to help donate some money to the cause it is a good cause so please call in 786-245-8127 you're listening to the Jackal's Head here on the great PSN radio and <laughs> George Rodriguez Show. Who? I said the George Rodriguez Show. You don't know George Rodriguez? Wasn't he the guy that filled in for Neil Rogers? Yes, that George Rodriguez. What's he like? Oh, he's a short little Cuban fella. Kind of funny looking. Well, when's he on? 12 to 3, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on SoFloRadio.com and SoFloRadio.net. The George Rodriguez Show is much more than adequate. Looking for a used car? Well, look no further. Florida Fine Cars has the car just for you. Here at Florida Fine Cars, we pride ourselves in customer service and quality of cars. Looking for a high-end car? We got them. Looking for an older car for a small cash deal? We got them. Due to having over 400 cars in our inventory, no matter what your situation, we can help. For more information, please go to www.floridafinecars.com today. Now Comic Book Service, where you can save 40 to 75% off on new comics, collected editions, graphic novels, action figures, statues, and other one-of-a-kind items from DC, Marvel, Image, Dark Horse, Boom Studios, Top Cow, Dynamite, and many, many more. Go to www.dcbservice.com for easy ordering and fast delivery. Or you can visit our brick-and-mortar location at 10202-C Coldwater Road in Fort Wayne, Indiana. DCBS, welcome home. The Nicole Sandler Show, weekday mornings at 10 on the South Florida Radio Network. When you're ready to actually lose weight safely and steadily while being monitored by a physician, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson is there for you. The family medicine practice was established by her father in 1956 and continues as a medical practice that now specializes in weight reduction. Dr. Kim Jacobson joined the practice 20 years ago as both a family medicine practitioner and weight loss specialist. The weight loss clinic utilizes a combination of appetite suppression medication and vitamins to produce great results, usually 3 to 4 pounds per week for most patients. Now you can change your lifestyle while still enjoying your own food, just less of it. They offer a choice of two, three, or four week plans. So whether you just need to lose a few pounds or a lot, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson can help you. They're located at 5454 Northeast 4th Avenue in Miami, just two blocks west of 54th Street and Biscayne Boulevard. Call them at 305-751-0091. They'll be happy to answer any and all of your questions. That's 305-751-0091. Get started on a beautiful new body today with Dr. Kim Jacobson and the weight loss clinic. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's SupermanHomePage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. SupermanHomePage.com, covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. SupermanHomePage.com, for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever want wanted to know about the Man of Steel and more. Superman, homepage.com. Roswell, UFOs, flying saucers, alien abduction, 
Are we alone? Information regarding this and many other questions about the unknown are only a click away at www.theufostore.com. The UFOstore.com offers hundreds of DVDs about UFOs, aliens, crop circles, conspiracies, Bigfoot, suppressed science, ancient mysteries. Log on to www.theufostore.com and request a free UFO store catalog. The UFOstore.com, the largest selection of UFO products on the Internet. Everybody, welcome back to PSN Radio, SoFlo Radio, Talk Stream Live. This is the Jackal's Head. I am the Jackal, and my guest again is Mr. UFO Phil himself, the amazing UFO Phil, a man who is leading the crusade to unite the planet with his good alien buddies. Phil, welcome back to the show, my friend, and I want to thank you again for spending your time with us on the show here and, you know, being open to, uh, you know, answering all questions concerning these aliens and concerning their agenda, which now we know, you know, the good aliens have a good agenda. We know that much for a fact. That's true, Kanye, and uh, I'm really no, no, glad no. that Phil, you're... Phil, 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 it, it, it's, it's Jackal. Okay, and you're Kanye's yeah. agent, right? You're his agent? I'm his friend. Me and him are good friends. We're buddies. Okay, so we'll just tell Kanye that we're really looking forward to the concert uh, okay. next year, and I really hope he agrees to perform. But to answer your question, of course the good aliens have a good agenda, and if they didn't, they would probably be forced to change their name. That's a great point, Phil. That's, an, uh, that's probably one of the best points I've ever heard uh, when it comes to aliens. Uh, now, let me ask you a, a couple of questions that I'm getting from the chat room, because some people want to know, uh, they want to know your thoughts on some of the big UFO, UFO cases from the last 50 years. Uh, for example, they want to know your thoughts on the Travis Walton case. Um, is that Was that the one where uh, the giant uh, purple disc fell from the sky and squished the cat? And everyone was really upset about that, and then they were just, they were throwing, like, they had toy discs, and they were throwing them into the fire, and they said, down with the UFOs, down with the UFOs? Not quite, no. It's the guy from Arizona who was abducted uh, while he was out logging with uh, him and his friends. Uh, they saw what looked like a fire in the sky, hence the name of the book, and the movie Fire in the Sky. And uh, they went towards it. It was a UFO instead of a fire in the woods, and uh, it ended up uh, abducting Travis Walton and taking him for five days where he was aboard a craft, and he has only vague memories of what happened to him up there. Um, and he described beings that uh, could possibly be blue. I figured it was either that one or the one where they were throwing the disc into the fire, but I knew it involved fire. The, yes. um, there are some aliens that are not very happy about logging. They're the environmentalist aliens, and they're very, they get, they get very upset if somebody's destroying a planet, any planet, and they, they think that loggers, especially back in the days before the loggers would replenish the trees by planting new trees, they used to just strip forests. And so if you were a logger, chances are it's a fire in the sky, and they would get you. Huh. You think a lot of other folks have been abducted like Travis was uh, just, you know, coming home from a hard days at the uh, at the yard cutting wood? Yeah, a lot of these loggers, people who are just depleting the fish from from the lakes, um, a lot of these people that are just, you know, destroying the land, they will be abducted and there will be a great reckoning. Okay, another question here from the uh, from Facebook. They want to know what are your thoughts on human alien hybrids and why are they creating so many and why has it been going on for so long well i mean the bad aliens would like for everyone to have the bad alien genetic code because then they are easier to it's you know when they come they land on the planet and basically they they come down here and they start spouting out their bad alien agenda. You know, a lot of us who are not, who don't have bad alien blood, that's just going to feel wrong. And we're going to say, hey, wait a minute, we don't want this bad alien agenda. 
you know, mucking up the planet. But some of these other people, they're, they're going to, and this is when you're going to really see the people that have the alien blood, the hybrid bad aliens. They're going to start to be the ones that say, well, I don't know. It sounds okay to me. And when you see the people that are looking, looking at the bad aliens and this horrible destruction and they say, you know, it, I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. Those are the ones that have, those are going to be the hybrids, the hybrid bad aliens. Those are the ones we want to watch out for. And there's no surgery to correct it. So there's no way to fix them? Only through love. Just only through love. So love is the key, in other words. And kick cereal is good, too. Yes, and Tic Tacs, by the way. You might want to get a couple Tic Tacs later. Tic Tacs, yeah, they're great. Especially there, they're extra mini. There are some... Yeah, there are some bad aliens that you... The Tic Tacs will not even help their breath. Really? How, I would always wondered, how does alien breath smell like? Have you ever heard my song called Aliens Really Stink? Yes, I have. And well, that kind of says literal. it all. They're really literal. They're, they really stink that bad, huh? Do they shower at all, these yeah. aliens? I, I, I hope not, because if they're showering and they still smell like that, then something's wrong with their water. And they need to get that looked at. Maybe they're showering in... Uh, Dirty water, full of feces. Yeah, that's what I think. Maybe they, maybe they get into that kind of stuff. Feces infested. Yeah, water. maybe. You know, there's been reports, Phil, of uh, aliens wanting to take human beings and abduct them for possibly feeding purposes. They they like eating us. Do, do the evil aliens like to eat human? I've never been eaten by one, but. That it's quite possible certain different alien planets are very hungry, they're very carnivorous, and then they, some of them are just mean. They'll just do it for mean, for sport. They'll come down here and kill us for sport. But the the bad aliens that usually take me, they will just take me up and they'll chip in me and sometimes take out parts that I guess I don't really need them because I don't miss them, but I don't know what they take. They take stuff. They cannot come down the lighter. I don't know what they took. Ten pounds lighter? Oh, my. Well, I don't know what they yeah. took, but at least they left you ten pounds lighter. That's not a bad way to lose some weight. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. Yeah, they can't be that bad. See, I, I, I'm yeah. starting to think that these bad aliens might not be so bad after all, Phil. Uh, no? Uh, why... I'm not. I'm not sure I'll be able to talk with you very much longer if, if you're going to take that approach. No, 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 no. Of course, I. I mean, no disrespect. I know that the bad aliens have done you some harm, uh, but I mean, they they show signs of being able to be rehabbed and brought back to the good side. Well, it's. I mean, anything's possible. Like I say, if you if you take, I mean, you can take a snarling dog from an alleyway who you think wants to kill you and you could give him some steak and some love and he may still kill you but there's a chance that maybe he won't but you always right. have to watch your back you always have to be careful and if he has rabies then that's not safe here I'm getting another uh, chat request here or a question request in the chat uh, they want to know what are your thoughts on on ghosts, and if you think ghosts are just a manifestation of aliens playing a prank on us? No, I, I, ghosts are real, but if an alien dies, then, then you have an alien ghost. Okay. And so ghosts are just, you know, yeah, they, you can have ghosts of anything. Anything that was once alive, then is no longer alive, it can have a ghost. And, and sometimes the ghosts, they will travel on to different places and we won't see them, and sometimes they, they will just hang out here. So you really believe that these aliens, uh, that say like the ones on 47, and they crashed to the Roswell, you think that that alien is uh, reincarnated in a human now, for for example? Maybe it was uh, your dad? I, um, do you think so? They're, they're, it's possible. I wouldn't see why That's not. That's interesting. I thought it, I'd never thought of that. That's a scary thought, but that would that would answer a lot of questions. And then I would have to say that now we could, you know, if that's the case, we could definitely confirm that the Roswell crash, that that alien was definitely a bad alien, because my this man who 
Well, he claims to be my father. He uses a lot of bad words. Maybe he has anger issues because of the fact that he is an alien, or at least a part alien, and he doesn't know how to handle that. I mean, ha has he tried at all to reach out in any other way other than stealing your money? He uh, he reaches out. He reaches in. He comes. He climbs through my windows when I'm not home. You know, and I don't appreciate it. He he eats my kick cereal. I don't know. I really don't know what his agenda is. Uh, it concerns me. It frightens me. Yeah, it's not cool to take your your son's cereal. That's just that's cold blooded in many ways, many many ways. So Les Michael, you know, how did you know this guy, Les Michael, who of course uh, put together the UFO Phil movie? Is he still in contact with you? Is he still working with you on any other projects? He usually, he, you know, like a couple times, like after Spokane, he disappeared for a while and he was angry at me and he sent me some nasty letters and things like that and he went off to LA and then. When the money runs out, he comes back. He comes back around. So he came back out to Colorado when I was working on that project. And then now he is sleeping in my extra bedroom in California. So he's like your daddy. keeps coming around when he needs money. Listen, Phil, we have a caller on the line. 425, you're on the line with UFO Phil on the Jackal's Head. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jackal. Hi, UFO Phil. This is Heavenly Angel. How are you tonight? Hello. Doing good. Doing great, dear. How I'm you enjoying doing? the show. I'm, are you? I'm enjoying the show tonight. Yes, thank you. Yeah. You I want to know how much uh, I have a question. I want to know how much tickets are for the show, and um, when, where can we purchase them, and when? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to work out um, all the arrangements now, so I don't have the exact. I don't have it done through Ticketmaster or anything yet. But um, right now, if everything goes with the current budget that we have and all the costs involved, and to get the artists to perform, the, the tickets will be six hundred ten dollars each. So I'm trying to do something to bring that price down, and hopefully, I can get it down a lot cheaper than that because that's a lot of money. That's yeah, that is. Just a little, yeah. Well, well, but look at the acts that are showing up there. I mean, Kanye West, Lady Gaga, UFO Phil. It's going to be an amazing show. Yeah. Katy Perry. Katy Perry. K Katy yeah. Perry. Yes. I've, I've, Actually, UFO Phil, Phil yeah. You, you know what would drive the cost down, Phil, and you might want to look into this? If you guys book uh, Rebecca Black to sing that song Friday at the show, that might bring the cost way down, because that, of course, is... Oh, wow. Know, that, I mean, that'll drive the cost to the ground, I think. That might help. Well, she's been calling me. I, I don't know. Do you think I should call her back? I didn't, I didn't really know who, who this woman was. Who is this person? Well, Rebecca I like Black. her. Oh, my. <laughs> I, 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 think I posted that, a music on my Facebook wall, yeah. I think, I think Rebecca Black might be the way to go, Phil. If you really want to get the cost down, because see what happens is anything that she's associated with is an automatic, uh, automatic either failure or it loses, uh, you know, the, yeah, it flops immediately. Which we don't want this to flop, but we want the ticket sales to go down. Uh, so you know what you do is you sign her up, you make sure the ticket sales go down, and then a, a few days before the show, you fire her from you know being on the show. So she doesn't really tarnish and make the show flop, and then you can have an amazing show. But the cost of the tickets will go down from here to then. So I'm, I'm working out the equation based on everything you just said. Well, what if you um, made it so that the proceeds go to a organization to help people with um, a cause that you're fond of? Carry the one. And, okay, if I do what you said, Jackal, actually, I don't know. I mean, like, it seemed to make sense, but now we've got prices at $6,100 per ticket if Rebecca Black is there. How does that work? Whoa, wait a second. So, hold on, hold on. You're saying that Rebecca Black would actually make more people want to buy this ticket, so the actual interest would be so high that they will jack up the prices? No, it has more to do with the insurance. They're afraid people are going to kill themselves. Oh, that makes sense. insurance costs <laughs> that <rocket. laughs> Phil, that makes perfect sense, actually. Oh. Mass suicide, huh? 
<laughs> yes. No. Yeah. Uh, that's okay, right. So, yeah, so I think Re- Rebecca Black then might be uh, a little bit too much for this concert. But $600, if we though, can that's... Get some sort of, if we can get, like, a corporate sponsor to foot the cost, you know, to subsidize the, the thing, or if we can get the government to come in and to give some money and, you know, get some government grants or something like that, then we could, you know, get the tickets. I, I would love for it to just be free because, I mean, we're going to save the planet here. I mean, isn't that the whole point? Uh, you know, a lot of folks are going to say, well, UFO Phil's making a buck. Uh, that's not right. You know, what do you say to folks like that, UFO Phil? People have said that to me before, and I don't understand. Like, what, <laughs> I put my songs on, on iTunes, and then people said, well, he's just trying to make money. And what they don't understand is that my songs were available for free on my website for years. And people would download them and whatever, but for some reason there are people who have trouble converting because they were MP3s and they don't know how to import them into iTunes and they just thought it would be more convenient if I just put it on iTunes already. So I did that, and you can't put it on iTunes for free, so I figured I'd put it on there and sell it, but I don't really make that much money. That's for money for a living. I want to know. What? <laughs> What's wrong with making money for a living? I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, no, there's so nothing wrong with an end. Yeah. yeah, and of course, all you know, I'm nonprofit, so everything that goes that comes in, it goes straight into saving the planet too. Well, there, well, you, there go. you go. That's a worthy yes. cause. And but, people, uh, thank you, know, you for it, your time. I'm enjoying the show. Thank you so much for answering thank you, my Angel. questions tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. And, and people, it costs a lot of money to to create these pyramids. Phil, I'm sure you're you're forking over a lot of money uh, for these pyramids. How much is it running you each one of these pyramids you're building? Well, when you consider even just for the limestone brick, you know, um, I don't know what the going rate is for limestone today. I haven't checked the price today, but we need two million three hundred thousand bricks. You know, That's and a lot each of brick is. is it's a lot of brick, and each brick is very large in and of itself. 2.57 tons for one brick. That equals, you know, almost 6,000 pounds per brick and, two, you know, over 2 million bricks. That's a lot of limestone. That's going to cost a lot of money. Now, is that for one pyramid, or is that for all the pyramids? No, well, that's just going to be for, you know, for the um, Alcatraz Pyramid. And then the same thing again for the one in, in the Rocky Mountains. And then a little bit less for the one behind the Hollywood sign. Also, you're building a pyramid right behind the Hollywood sign also. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I want to do that. Um, but it's not, there's just not enough room there to build a full-size pyramid. So it's going to be like a backup generator. Look, speaking of Hollywood, of course, Scientology is huge in Hollywood. Do you know of any connection between the good or bad aliens and Scientology? I believe that uh, that Scientology, most of the people that are working with Scientology are in contact with the good aliens. If you look at them, they have a lot of good intentions, even though sometimes, like, stupid stuff happens. They, right. they are very well-meaning when they do the stupid stuff. And they do stupid stuff very often, which is great. That's the great thing about Scientologists. Uh, at least they, they are good for a laugh for a long period of time. So do you, do you have any uh, thoughts on uh, Xenu and their belief of uh, the aliens that came down many, many years ago and uh, spread these spirits up, uh, you know, on the planet where we were once ran by Neanderthal man? They came and all these spirits got inside us, inside of us humans and uh, became what we know as Homo erectus. Do you think that uh, there's any truth to that? I mean, this is what they believe. I don't really subscribe to that theory, no. That just goes a little bit against what I've read from the book of Zaxxon. Okay, so Zaxxon would confirm then for us that Scientology doesn't have it right, at least. No, like I said, they're very well-meaning. Um, right. Yeah, they're very well-meaning. So I believe that they are, they're in touch with good aliens and they want to do good things. I just think that the way that they're doing it is a little bit wacky. Unlike, you know, if you look at the stuff that I do, it all, you know, I strive to make perfect sense. And with the pyramids, it's very practical. And then some of the stuff that the Scientologists are doing, you know, I, when's the last time they built a pyramid? That's a good point. I don't think they well, unless you count what happened to Katie Holmes after Tom Cruise impregnated her. That was kind of a pyramid shape. But other than that, no, yeah, they've never really built a pyramid. 
No, not yet. Now they may, yeah. you know, once the news spreads of what I'm trying to do, and then we've got Kanye, Katie, Lady Gaga, UFO Phil performing, then they may, you know, um, I've had a few calls from Tom Cruise. And I've have yet to call him back. And it's, it's just, I've just been busy. I have nothing against Tom Cruise. I love the guy. Uh, but he's been calling. And I think he just, maybe he's got some ideas. Maybe he has a show that he wants to do uh, that can be part of our show. I don't know. But these are things to be ironed out. Look, there's a lot of time from here to when the show's going to take place next year. Uh, you know, we would all love to see Tom Cruise join that act and do something at the concert next year. That would be great. And like what I'm going to tell him uh, is, you know, if you can levitate, if you can cause the earth to rumble, something, something that really gets people's attention, then they will start to believe. Um, but if you just show up with your Dianetics books or whatever, I'm not sure what they, what's their, I'm not sure what they use for their books. And you give people free books, it doesn't always work. But if you can, you know, if there's a large you know, cloud in the sky and it just rains thunderbolts at your command, then people will listen. I agree. Speaking of people will listen, you know, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the disclosure movement by Steve Bassett, for example, who's fighting the hard fight to try to get disclosure to happen? Well, in, you know, there's a lot of documents and things that, that are behind the scenes, and like the thing you said about JFK and the, the government, the problem with the government is that a lot of times, you know, different factions within the government might be in, in touch with bad aliens, and they might not have our best interests at heart. And so you're going to get a lot of resistance to try and get all that information to come forward. And if you, it's not just a matter of revealing the truth about one little aspect of the aliens, but then all of a sudden everything gets released, and then you say, oh my gosh, you know, this person, you know, I thought this person was great, and then, but they were up there doing, you know, this other stuff, and the government doesn't want you to find out about it. Do you think that uh, disclosure is, is going to happen soon, though? I mean, before 2012, before the events, do you think the government's just going to open up and tell us everything, or are they just going to write it out and see what happens? I don't expect them. I, I would love them to tell us everything, but I think that there's, there, there's too much at risk for them to do so. I don't think they're willingly going to, to do that. I mean, we'd almost have to. When Zaxxon arrives, he may be able to get them, you know. Zaxxon has a way of making things happen, and he may, you know, sit down with the president and say, look, this is what we need to do, and they come to an agreement, and maybe they release all the information. But there's a lot of stuff that they want to keep hidden. Phil, if, if you know, if I wanted to meet Zaxxon, is there a possibility that we can make this happen? Oh, I can put you on the list. Yeah, there's a few people. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll move you. To, you're my best friend. I'll move you to the top of the list. And awesome. what are you doing tonight? Around what are you doing at midnight? Because he, you know, it's almost. I mean, that's coming up in a few minutes. You got time? Well, uh, you know, I, I am producing a show called Unraveling the Secrets, which. Uh, it's coming up in a few minutes here, uh, but I could leave it here on standby, you know, self-producing if if they can make a trip down here for a little bit. Well, maybe another night. You know, we'll figure out. Just email me. We'll work out. See what's good with your schedule. Because that's the great thing when the good aliens abduct you. They're very, you know, they're conscientious. They you want to respect your time. They're not just going to grab you like a bad alien does. Oh no! Trust me, Phil. Uh, for the good aliens, I will make the time. Okay, well, I'll, I'll call Zaxxon then tonight, and then uh, see what we can work out. Sounds good, my friend. Listen, uh, we're almost out of time, but before I let you go, this is customary on my show. I always get a, a small bumper from my guests, and I want to know if you'd be so kind to supply the show with a small bumper. Uh, and it, all you'd have to do is say the following phrase. Uh, and you could, of course, improvise, which I'm sure you, you would be great at if you, if you wanted to. Uh, but the... Kind of like the uh, the main ingredient of what I want you to say follows like this. Uh, this is UFO Phil, and now I'm a voice inside the jackal's head. And like I said, you could improvise on that, but kind of get that in there. Can you do that for me? I can do it right now. Go ahead. I'm going to give you the floor. Go. Hi, this is UFO Phil, and I'm a voice inside the jackal's head. Hi, this is UFO Phil, and you must have your ear pressed up to the jackal's ear, and you're listening to what's inside his head, because... That's where I am. I'm a voice inside his head. Phil, my Too friend. Too confusing? No, that it was perfect. That was great. Just like having you on tonight was just an amazing experience. And, you know, I really want to call you my friend. Can, can I say that you're my friend also? Can we be friends? You have to. You have to now because you can't. Okay. Don't ever. If you ever say otherwise, then it'll be sad. No, no. I want to be one of your best friends, Phil. 
I want I want you back on the show here very soon, and uh, we we have, we must continue talking, sir. Okay, thank you. Take care, Phil. Guys, this is the amazing UFO Phil, who has been so kind to join us here on the Jackal's Head. I want to thank him. Thank you, sir, for being here. Have a great night. Take care, Phil.